You are watching Adjuster TV. You ever wish you could just ask somebody, how are you supposed to network? I mean, not just anybody, but you wish you could ask the man at networking, someone who's really good, who's proven over and over again, they know how to network like a professional. They know how to further their career as an individual in insurance through networking. Yeah, so did I. That's why I've interviewed a few different industry leaders and I brought on one today specifically for you guys so you can hear from him exactly how to further your career by getting to know people through networking. Hey IAs and welcome to the Auto IA Show by IA Path. You know how most new adjusters struggle to meet the experience requirements and have no way of getting started? That's why at IA Path we started a mentorship program that gets the experience requirements waived with over 20 companies so you can get started working in the next 90 days. For all the best tips, tricks, and tools, head on over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. While you're there, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time we have a new video. Now, without further ado, let me bring in our guest of honor today, John Bachman. Okay, so I'm, I'm here with John Bachman, the man, the myth, the legend. You might as well call him the Batman of the insurance industry <laughs> now, Michael Keaton himself. And, uh, and John, I, we're here to talk about networking because you know that's a big deal in the insurance industry. So when I say the word networking, what starts popping and going off in your head? Really, the way I see it is relationship building, but with a business uh, edge to it, it, really what it is. So you're building those relationships, but it is on the business side of things. And that's the first thing that comes into my mind. I like your description there, that relationships. That, that's it. I think we're very similar in that way that, you know, it's relationships are the key. So piggybacking on that, if relationships are the key to networking, everybody says about the insurance industry, it's all about who you know. Is that really a true statement? Or how, how do you feel about that? To become successful, do you really need to know people? Uh, yes and no. So yes, um, some of those people will be able to open doors for you that you normally couldn't open for yourself. But it, the insurance industry, like many others, it's a meritocracy as well that you have to get yourself there. It's, hey, if I know you, Chris, you might be able, able to open a door with a connection for me, but that doesn't mean that it's going to present a true opportunity to me. So it, it's a little bit of both. Absolutely. And it, I, I kind of how I look at it too, is someone can open the door and let you come in, but you have to hold it open and you have to hold your own. You know, you can't, no one can, can, can sell you past an introduction. Like, oh, absolutely. But that introduction could be key as well. That, that is a key component. And I hope this doesn't go on too long, my little description here. Uh, but I was talking to Nick Lamparelli a bit about this as well a while back. It, there was a book I read called The 80-20 Manager. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the chapters is called The Super Connector. And just a real simple way if he puts it together is that there are green cards and there are red cards. And these are lottery tickets. The red ones are the ones that cost a lot of money and they take a lot of time, but you can still get that million dollar jackpot. And what those are is education and like going to college um, where you're devoting a ton of time and a ton of resources. The green tickets, they cost a lot less and it's the connections. It's people that may open a door for you, but that one little cheap ticket, cheap, ticket can get you to that same jackpot without having to devote as many resources so absolutely it's the comparison of four years at college like you're saying investing twenty thousand dollars or whatever maybe way more than that depending if you're going to a university to get a degree which might get you in the door at a company versus taking you know a certification class or a skills development class at a community college and knowing a guy who says hey this guy knows how to weld let's get him in here Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It makes they, a lot they, of sense. I like that. Red tickets and green tickets. Yeah, uh, they, they both get you to that jackpot, and they're still just chances. It's not guaranteeing you a jackpot, but they're weighted absolutely equally. 
Yep. It's so true. Very, very good point. I like that. I like that. I'm going to have to look up the, the A20 manager. Check it All out. right. John, now you've been on, we'll call it the dark side since you're Batman anyways, uh, the dark side of the industry in, co in comparison to being an IA. You know, we, we, we see the world a little bit differently as IAs because we're our own business owners. But you've seen IAs from your vantage point of being a staff adjuster, being a staff manager and, and handling claims from that side. And you've seen the networking aspect of IAs and as someone who's trying to become staff. So what are the big mistakes that you see, not just from IAs, but from everybody who's making mistakes when they network? What is the big mistakes that you're seeing? Yeah, so um, I know we've done this before. We, we've spoken before, and I, I throw around Gary Vaynerchuk a ton, and I'm going <laughs> to do it again right now. Um, it's going in for the kill way too early, or as he re refers to it as going for the right hook instead of jab, jab, jab. Mm -hmm. And what that is is, is you're – you're putting out an ask way too early before a relationship is built. You need to develop that relationship long before you're asking for anything in return. Um, one negative thing that I see is, especially on LinkedIn, our folks are saying, hey, I, I'd love to connect with you. And I'm always up for connecting with new people. But the very next message that I get is, hey, I work for XYZ Adjusting. We'd love to be on your panel. And you know what? You haven't proven to me anything at that point of why I should trust you with the business. And sure, once we develop a, a long lasting relationship, hell yeah, I'm going to give you a shot. But just coming out with an ask out of the gate, it's, it's not going to help you out. Well, it's a relationship, right? That's what you said. It's a, if, if networking is a relationship to John, then John's looking for a relationship and you don't go out on the first date asking for stuff you better be giving flowers and opening doors and all these things you're giving trying to earn that relationship to then potentially get to an ask at some point but you got to earn it yeah and going back to gary vader chuck that's in one of his keynotes that's exactly what he says is it in relationships you don't walk into that singles bar walk up to a, a lady hand them your room key and say i'll see you shortly no <laughs> only you, gary v can say that with a straight face and get away right? with it <laughs> but, it, but it's such a great analogy because it it, he's absolutely right. If you want a long-term relationship with that person, mm -hmm. you're not going for the quick, uh, the quick fix. Yeah, and if you are, then likely that person, unless they're looking for the same thing, they're not going to respond. And then that might be your only chance. Right. To, to develop and start that relationship. So you don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Have you read the book? And I know we're kind of, I, I chat more than I interview, I think. Uh, have you read the book, The Go-Giver? No, not familiar with that one, no. All right, definitely check it out. I think you'll love it. It's a short uh, story. Basically, it, it's fictional, but it's about a guy who's at the end of his road in his career and he meets like, you know, a multi-millionaire and he says, I'll mentor you, but you got to do what I ask you to do every day you know, before I'll mentor you again the next day. And if you don't, don't come back. And he teaches him how to said to be of being a go-getter to be a go-giver. And yeah. it totally changes the way his business operates and everything. It's a phenomenal, short, amazing read that'll change the way uh, you view networking relationships. So anybody listening, that's a great book to pick up. No, that's awesome. I, I appreciate that. And, and really, that is, there's a, a mental shift now, too, especially with true salesmen, which I believe we're all salesmen for ourselves, sales, sales yeah. people, sales uh, women as well. That, all getting politically correct now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not all about that closing the deal in the long run. It's what kind of value can you offer? It's value-based selling. And that is so much more crucial to whomever is buying from you is what value can you give that person? So this is one thing that I have started to focus in on ever since I path and, and I want to get your thoughts on it and inside the book, you know, cause we're doing this whole special about networking to, because we're, we're finishing up a book called the um, networking adjusters playbook. And in it, I talk about being able to network properly a lot of the, your success depends on who you're choosing to network. And so how I say to, to devout or how I say to choose who you're going to go network with is who can you help the most? Yeah. That's the person you go and then you go help them. So have you seen that in your own career? That's like networking for networking sake to me can be very frivolous. If I'm Absolutely. just networking with the wrong people, but if I'm able to help that person, now I've got a relationship. 
if you go from the mindset of helping people out rather than what it's going to do for you, that's when you're going to win. If you're only looking at tactics and tricks and, hey, if I do this on this social media platform or that, you're going to lose. If, if you're not looking at that person and what you're going to add for value, forget about it. You're going to lose. You shouldn't even bother trying to network in the traditional sense because it's not going to work. So going in deeper then because of your position and the positions you've held in the past, what does an IA firm who's looking to get on maybe a, a roster or, or vendor list for an insurance company? I get that question all the time and I've never done it. I'm not an expert in that. Yeah. Um, so what, if they're going to try to network with an insurance company in a claims department, how, how do they even start that relationship and what would you be looking for for a potential partner on the vendor side? What I want to hear is, I, again, it's going back to what can they offer that's different. And one key thing that they can do is have a lot of research about whatever type of claim it is, whatever trends and problems that are going on right now, and offer up solutions about that before ever talking about coming onto a panel of, hey, John, I, I, I've been doing some research about X, Y, and Z. Here are, some, here are three things that I'm seeing on the auto side of the business that are coming down the road for insurers that they have to look out for because it's going to equal increased um, repair costs. I, I'd love to share with you. Do you want, do you have 20 minutes to talk about it? I'm going to listen to that person more than, Hey, I, I do auto appraisals in new England. Do, can you give us a shot? If, if they're telling us that they're tuned into the industry, they know what's going down. They can offer different solutions. And if you notice, I didn't mention anything about, hey, I've been doing this for so many years. Um, I've done so many appraisals um, throughout my career. It has nothing to do with that. It's those other value things because that shows that, number one, that person cares about what the hell they're doing. They know what's going down. And you know what? They might offer me something different than my current panel. I love that. I love that. I think that's that's – that's brilliant. So for all of you who listen into these videos and the podcast and everything, and you've ever asked me about how do I go get regional or smaller insurance carriers to even pay attention? Uh, John just told you, guess what? You got to be invested in the industry. And that's hard to fake. Uh, as I know, I, I was not invested in the industry when I started iPath and I had to become invested and learn about the industry and learn about everyone else. So John, when you're, you're looking at something big like that, uh, if you were role reversing, you're now an IA firm trying to get a company to pay attention. Uh, are you gonna start doing that kind of research and maybe doing some social media kind of things, not directly to anybody, but just to kind of put it out there that, hey, this is the things we're looking at and thinking about. Well, yes, but I, I'd even go in one step further and say on the social end too. First, I would do the industry. I'd, I'd sign up for every blog that has to do with your industry and your particular niche that you're looking to succeed in. Um, read those articles every morning, every night. Um, catch those uh, new trends. And that research needs to be done before you ever think about talking to anybody um, out of the gate. The second piece is I would do a, a lot of social search and or website searching on my dream clients of who I would want to do business with and do some research of, yeah, this carrier is regional and they only handle the Southeast and they do a great job with this type of niche. If you start talking to people about themselves, people love hearing that. And uh, if you're going in with the first thing about the industry, things about them, whether it be on social media from their own website, doing that research, they're more apt to listen to you. Absolutely, absolutely. Love it, love it, love it. Great stuff. Now, John, all right, so we've gotten, we've gotten, you know, what are the mistakes and then, you know, going in for the kill and everything. So, you know, I could have heard of some big deals that Mr. Bachman's landing and he's done pretty good at networking. So I'm assuming the answer is yes, but has networking helped you in your career even prior to this year? You know, um, Yes, but I'll tell you, it's still only a very reasonably short period of time that I've been proactively networking. 
Um, literally uh, 2016, uh, mid-year, I didn't have a LinkedIn account. Um, and I always thought, one, that my network was the people within my office. I worked at a carrier at that point that was 500 people. Why would I need to network more than 500 people? Uh, the second thing is I always got worried that if I signed on to LinkedIn, my employer was thinking I was looking for another job. So that's a, that's a tell for another day. <laughs> but in, in 2016, I, I just started to embrace it and uh, through multiple connections. And they've been one-offs, but they opened up a door to this piece of the web and this piece and then to this piece. And it's grown exponentially. And really over the past year, it's opened opportunities that I never even thought I would possibly be. And I know you're alluding to the video. Yeah, I, I was a claims guy in, in, a claim, in a claims leadership role. Never would have thought about marketing myself the way I did if it wasn't for these networking opportunities that I had. And it's, it's pretty exciting when you think about that uh, and to the listener and to the person watching. When you think that two years ago, basically 2016, I mean, we're just now in the 2019, but two years ago, you didn't have a LinkedIn account. Two years ago, I didn't have a LinkedIn account. I path was just being born. And now you're considered a leader, you know, a leader in the online space of insurance. So in two short years, the little bit of networking juice that you put in over the last two years, whether, yeah, we know it's a crap ton of work, but I mean, for two years is not a long time. It's all you've been networking for 30 years doing this to get to where people know who you are. Now you're near, basically a household name online in the insurance industry. Which is, Which is encouraging. It, that, it still blows my mind to hear you say that. It's very humbling. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we had a big announcement yesterday. I don't know if that's going to date this video at all. That's okay. Uh, about teaming up with a website, um, insurancenerds.com, it, it, as well as partnering with another um, uh, video blogger or vlogger. And yeah, that's opening even more doors for me than I've opened for myself through the networking. Now I'm relying upon a couple other people and their networks and it's, it's growing out and we're doing some pretty cool stuff online. So it's, uh, it's amazing. And in my video work, Chris, I'm not sure if you even know this. I just started doing video in April of 18. So we're still less than a year into the video. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't take long, but it's the intentionality I think that you put into the networking that has allowed it to happen. And then coupled with you're genuine, you build relationships, you're not a fake, you're not a fraud. So you can't do one without the other. You've got to be genuine, but you also have to be intentional about what you're doing. Absolutely. You, you have to be you and you have to be honest about why you're doing whatever it is you are doing and, and being honest with the people you're connecting with. Uh, hey, this is what I'm looking to do uh, long term. I'd love to add you into my network and learn how what you've done to succeed and, and any advice that you could offer up. Uh, but that's after you're building that relationship. Absolutely. So as we kind of close out this interview and love all the tips you give, what additional tips can you give to an adjuster, whether they're looking to become an independent or looking for a staff job of tips that they can take and apply in their networking now to help them succeed? Um, you just said it earlier about being unique, be you, um, you are what sets you different from the crowd. So that's key. Second one, and I'm gonna give this right to you, uh, Chris, cause I know you're not big on social media. It's not going away. Sign up for every single social media platform, <laughs> learn how to use them. And yeah. yeah, I know a couple of years ago, the big joke was, oh, on, on Facebook, I don't care what you're eating or what you're showing me, but these platforms, it, it's a way to not only develop the relationships with a, a, a ton of people out there, but it's when you're marketing to a client, it, whatever you're selling, there's opportunity there. And whether it's um, doing a, an update on Twitter or Facebook or connecting on LinkedIn, or even now with Instagram, Instagram is huge right now for businesses. And I'd encourage everybody on there. There's a new app out called TikTok, which is crazy. I don't know how to use it yet or what the point will be, but I know people are on it. There are eyes there. There's an audience. So you have to figure out how to use it. Well, I think in claims to you're talking about Instagram photos are big because we see a lot of crazy stuff, especially in auto claims and property claims. Oh my goodness. Just sharing one photo that doesn't show anything personal 
but shows a wreck or it shows house and just like man I had a really tough one today a really dramatic you know what i'm saying and and sharing some of the things that you're just seeing you're not even advertising yourself you're just saying this is something i dealt with today that gives a potential opportunity because people see that you're working and working people tend to keep working is what it, I absolutely it and it's on instagram it's so easy to follow hashtags and whatnot too and i follow things like adjuster life claims life those types of things and those will pop up in my feed and what i see a lot too is on cat deployments People are, are taking a picture out the plane window of saying, all right, I'm heading to Boulder, Colorado, big hailstorm, excited about it, hashtag adjuster life. And I, I'll, I'm reaching out to those people telling, hey, good luck out there, be safe and uh, rock it out. Um, and, and that's another way to build the network as well. So I check out every social platform. Chris, I know you're not big on all the social platforms, but... Get there, brother. Personal choice. It's a personal yeah. choice. Not, and that's probably not a business choice. Personal choice. So, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. All right, John. Thanks so much, man. It's been a blast. And thank you for all the nuggets you've given. And, and thanks for everything you're doing in the industry, not just on this interview. Really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, looking forward to getting this information in as many people's hands as we can. No, I appreciate it. And I, I definitely appreciate it you too, Chris, because not only were you rocking it as an adjuster and appraiser, um, but you're going beyond that as well. And there aren't many people that are going beyond their typical day-to-day -day job like myself. We have to get more people out there helping others. Um, so I appreciate so much what you're doing for everybody, the up-and-comers and, and those that are already in the industry just looking to get better. So if you're interested in becoming an independent adjuster or an auto damage appraiser as a part of a diversified career, head on over to ipath.com and click the how to find work button. There is a free video course for you teaching you exactly how to become an IA and how to have a successful career. Thank you very much for watching the Auto IA Show and until next week, keep walking your path and claiming your life.